should I be like, so today I forgot to condemn Al-Qaeda. Uh, so here's the Al-Qaeda one. Today I forgot to condemn FGM. So here he goes. <laughs> today I forgot to condemn Hamas. So here he goes. During a conference in Washington, D.C., Democratic Representative Ilhan Omar completely dismantled an ignorant question from an audience member. Watch. Uh, will you be able to make a statement against FGM? Because that's a, an issue um, in Detroit. I would, it would be really powerful if, if the two Muslim congresswomen, yourself and Rashida, would make a statement on this issue. Your second question is an appalling question because I, I always feel like there are bills that we vote on, um, bills we sponsor, um, many statements we put out, and then we're in... Um, in a panel like this and the question is posed, could you and Rashida do this? And it's like, how often should I make a schedule? Like, does this need to be on repeat every five minutes? Should I be like, so today I forgot to condemn Al-Qaeda. Uh, so here's the Al-Qaeda one. Today I forgot to condemn FGM. So here he goes. <laughs> today I forgot to condemn Hamas. So here he goes. Today I forgot, you know what I mean? I, I, it is. Um, a very frustrating question. It comes up. You can look at my record. I voted for bills um, doing exactly what you're uh, asking me to do. I have put out statements upon statements. There's a bill in, in Congress. There's a resolution that I am the co-author cool of that I voted out of the Foreign Affairs Committee. And so I am, I think, quite disgusted, really, to be honest, that as Muslim legislators, we are constantly being asked to waste our time uh, speaking to um, issues that other people are not asked to speak to because the assumption exists is that we somehow support and are for Right? You no, know, the, there is an assumption. So I want to make sure that the next time someone is in an audience and is looking at me and Rashida and Abdul and Sam, that they ask us the proper questions that they will probably ask any member of Congress or any legislator or any politician. and would not come with an accusation that we might support something that is so abhorrent, so offensive, so evil, so vile. What we look for and what this whole conversation is about is that not only do we not have internalized fears about what we might believe and how that get, gets implemented, but that we also don't have right, assumptions about what our value basis might be because of where we might come from and who we pray to. And so I would like, not just for you, but for everyone to know that if you want us to speak as politicians, American politicians, then you treat us as such. All right. I mean, if you're going to ask Ilhan Omar a question, make sure you do your homework first. So this was actually... So this was at the, the Muslim Caucus Education Collective Conference in Washington, D.C., and this question actually came from a Muslim human rights activist. So it came from uh, Annie uh, Zonveld. I mean, this is a Muslim human rights activist, and she didn't do just, you know, some basic research on what Ilhan Omar has already done, just giving in to the assumptions that the right wing always does when it comes to these sorts of uh, when it comes to lawmakers that you know don't happen to uh, be the same religion that they are or don't look like them. So the the person that so Annie Zonvel here asked Ilhan Omar, "Can you condemn FGM?" She has, she has multiple times. So not only did she uh, support uh, resolutions back in in 2017 when she was um, a uh, a state representative, but also Recently, 
So this from NBC News reporter Jonathan Allen. Ilhan has co-sponsored legislation to combat FGM and voted earlier this year to direct $1 million to fight it. There were six no votes in the House. This took five minutes of research. So, like, look, I get it. I understand because this is sort of like what this is what we're used to hearing. Oh, can you condemn this because this is kind of part of your community? I get the the inclination to want to to ask that question, to to want to do that. But the reality is Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, other Muslim lawmakers are asked questions like this over and over and over and over again. And not just lawmakers, people in uh in in the public eye. I mean, is every single white person that's that's on television, are they always asked to condemn white supremacy, to condemn white nationalism, to condemn um, what we're seeing uh, a rise of in the U.S.? No. Unless there is a history of them supporting it, like Donald Trump, they're not asked about it. So Ilhan Omar, Rashid Tlaib, they get these questions over and over and over again. All you have to do is some basic research and see that they have already condemned this before. So this idea that oh can you speak on this issue when they already have i mean it really shows you this this um like this sort of two-tiered system where if you don't look like everybody else if you don't uh if you aren't the same religion as everybody else in congress well then you're under more scrutiny and even if you live up to what they are asking you to live up to you are still questioned and you still have people who are supposed to be on your side a muslim human rights uh, human rights activist still uh presenting the same frames that people that are against ilhan omar uh are presenting her as so i mean just the whole thing is just like you can kind of expect this out of somebody who maybe if this was some conference that wasn't uh, the uh, the Muslim Caucus Education Collective Conference, like if it was if it, uh, if it was some other public forum, you can maybe expect this from some ignorant person asking the question. But this is somebody who should be informed on these issues, and they got <laughs> completely dismantled for the question. Now, I just want to go to some reactions online. So this is from uh, journalist Mehdi Hassan. Most Muslims born and brought up in the West, including or me have been waiting our whole lives for a politician who is Muslim to get elected and deliver an answer like this to the usual questions. I felt like cheering as I listened to Ilhan Omar deliver this powerful repost. UK Labour Party MP Chris, uh, Chris Williamson also uh, chimed in here saying, This is an excellent response from Ilhan Omar to a loaded question. In the face of the repeated absurd and offensive loaded questions and accusations put to socialists on this side of the Atlantic, we should definitely take a leaf out of Ilhan's book. And this from journalist Najma Sharif. Somali women, black Muslim women are going to change the course of our futures, and it'll be because of something as simple as having a backbone and a sense of dignity. Nothing layered and complicated, just a lack of fear and a sense of self will transform our futures. What Ilhan Omar brings to the political discussion, to Congress, is some much needed perspective. This is somebody who is giving voice to those that have been oppressed, to those that have been left behind, forgotten about, those that have not been represented in government, despite the fact that they are vital parts of society. So, look, nobody deals with the kind of shit that Ilhan Omar does. No other congressperson gets the kinds of threats that she does, gets treated by the media the same way that she does, based on her religion, based on how she looks. Nobody deals with what Ilhan Omar deals with. And despite all of that pressure, she manages to stay strong, stick to her guns, stand up for human rights, stand up for those that have been oppressed, left behind, and give voice to people that have been completely forgotten. And look, we're going to look back in history at Ilhan Omar, understand how how important this figure is. A lot of people aren't going to see it right now because we're in the middle of it. But Ilhan Omar is a trailblazer in a variety of ways. And this is one of many explaining why the framing of questions, why questions like this are so destructive. This is one of many ways that she has given us some much-needed perspective.